As my boot collection grows, I have moved more and more away from entry-level boots. I guess if you've been a long-term subscriber of Bootlosophy, uh, so have you. <laughs> but sometimes it's good to go back to your roots. How are you going? Welcome back to Bootlosophy. But if you're new here, my name is Tech. I acknowledge the Wajik people and their elders, traditional custodians of the lands that I work on. Today, I am going to go back to my roots a little bit and uh, I take another look at my Thursday diplomats and in particular, um, how they fit and how comfortable they are. But here's the thing. Uh, it's no spoiler alert that if you uh, watched my original review, uh, you can catch it up here, that I actually love the comfort of these boots. But my collection has grown and uh, I'm going to sell these now. I'll tell you about that at the end, uh, but first letting you know this video is not sponsored and I don't have a relationship with Thursday. And uh, while I'm putting a link to their website down below, it is not an affiliate link. However, if you want to help me out, please click on the like button down there and if you haven't already, don't forget the subscribe button. So briefly, this is Thursday's entry-level mock-toe boot in their rugged and resilient matte black. And I actually included it in my series on entry-level boots. Uh, we can, uh, you can watch from this link up here. I, I realize that there are several low-priced mock-toe boots like Brunts and so on, but these are quality Goodyear welted boots for US $199, which for the level of quality you get, I, I think is still amazing. The Goodyear welt is a 360 degree Goodyear welt and you can see it going all the way around the circumference of the boot. It is built on a brand name Vibram Christi wedge sole and inside it replicates everything you see in a quality heritage Goodyear welted boot, including a steel shank, uh, except that in place of a cork filler and a leather insole, Thursday famously uses a foam filler and pour on insole for comfort. Now this is often a source of social media contention, but bear in mind the price and the target market. Look, if you come from a dress shoe or sneaker background, or even if your uh, early boots were mall or shopping center brands, you'd be used to the comfort as you put your feet in your shoes. For that target market, you expect comfort, and you often have a shock if your first boot coming from that experience is say uh, a Red Wing 875 mock toe, uh, like this one that I reviewed up here. The need for a break-in would be a new and possibly horrifying experience for you. There are a couple of differences apart from immediate comfort, of course. Uh, this is not a work boot. It is just not constructed to wear to a construction site, face the truth. Like most Thursday boots, they are casual wear boots that take on some aspect of higher priced work and sturdier boots like service boots and so on. These are entry-level boots in designs that are similar to the pricier brands. These are mock toe because they have the stitching apron, uh, uh, the stitching around the apron of the vamp, making it look like a moccasin construction. But it is not, of course, built from the bottom up like the Russell uh, moccasin backcountry, which I have also reviewed. The Vibram wedge sole completes that look. However, the last profile is a lot sleeker than the work boot based uh, tall sided wall mock toe boots. Looking at it in profile, there's a very stylish slope down to the toe uh, and looking from the top, the toe box is a lot less rounded and more almond shaped. As I said in my original video, the matte black uppers are more of a low sheen than matte and to be honest, uh, they were never matte. but they became even more low sheen after I conditioned them with Big Four. The fact that they are casual wear boots explains how I have worn them over the last couple of years. Now, to be fair, <laughs> I actually have not worn them all that much, which is the main reason I'm selling them. I just don't wear them enough uh, to really appreciate them. In my original review, I said that they looked and felt like minimalist sneakers, and, and I still think so. Um, like some minimalist high top sneakers, right? There's a, not a lot of contrast stitching and the uppers are supple enough to imagine you're wearing sneakers. And the white wedge sole contrasting against black is very minimalist cup sole sneaker-like, don't you think? 
Now, I don't wear sneakers out, so I've been limited in how I wear them. In the last two years, I've worn them in something less than, I don't know, once a month and more than once every three months. And usually on carpets to the office, uh, on supermarket tiles, uh, uh, walking on pavements and grass in the city or to bars and restaurants on hardwood floors and carpets. No construction sites. I wear them with very casual clothes, like how you would wear minimalist sneakers, you know, uh, faded jeans and a t-shirt. Uh, or to smarten it up perhaps, a dressy night out button down and black pants. I guess you can throw on a sports coat because they're not so casual or workwear like that they are uh, out of touch in a smart casual outfit. And you can definitely throw on a leather coat or on the right occasion, uh, even a, 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 say a leather bomber jacket. But what I wanted to talk about is the comfort. Going back to the construction, the pour on used under your feet is very comfortable. Now boot diehards will say that you're sacrificing long-term comfort for immediate comfort because in time, the pour on will, I think, tend to break down and probably get a bit lumpy. Uh, whereas a cork and leather combo under your feet will gradually mold to your feet. That's the standard theory. Now I agree, but I do have a couple of responses to it though. First, if you wore these sparingly, and I'm guessing if you wear these as a, as a as part of a rotation of boots and shoes in its casual situation, not every day, it's going to take you a while before the pour on breaks down. As the economist John Maynard Keynes once said when talking about the long-term effects of macroeconomics, in the long run, we're all dead. As I said earlier, if you wear these as entry-level boots coming from sneakers or you know, shopping center chain dress shoes, the feeling of getting into these will be as familiar to you as putting on your Nikes. And after several years, when the underside maybe does feel lumpy, uh, being good you're welted, you can resole them. And they cost 199 US dollars. I cannot reinforce that enough. And they've been that price for years. My experience is that the comfort is just amazing. Better even than my Thursday captains. Uh, you can see what I think of those up there. I think that's because they have really good arch support. Now, I don't really know why, other than if you feel inside the boot, uh, under the, the, the leather comfort footbed liner, there is a definite bump into that arch, which is... Uh, missing in the other Thursdays that I own. That and the way the insoles are built into the uh, wedge outsole gives you the feeling of sure footedness and of being supported all along the foot, including into the gap in the arches. It is a really nice feeling. It's not particularly aggressive either. As for sizing, like all Thursday models, I got these in a half size down from my Brannock uh, and the same as almost all my other American heritage boots. I measure eight and a half in Brannock size, and I wear a nine in Nikes. But I wear these and all my other Thursdays and most other brands in an eight. So in UK or Aussie sizes, this is a seven and a half. The feeling is snug and supportive. However, if you have wide feet or splayed out toes, you may find that sizing a half down being a little snug. There is not a lot of room in that low profile and uh, almond shaped toe box. If you're used to sleek European shoes, if you're used to Aaron Williams's, that's not a problem. For me, there's no discomfort, just a firm handshake, you know? <laughs> but I can see people more used to the room of high profile mock toe boots like Red Wings and Thoroughgoods. They may feel that these are a little too, you know, closed up. So this was just a quick video. And uh, in summary, if I find these so comfortable, why am I selling them? Well, firstly, with a 130 plus pairs of boots, I am running out of room at home and I sadly need to cull. As a boot reviewer, there is no denying I'm going to get more boots. <laughs> some, some of my early ones have to go. Uh, as well, I just don't get to wear these uh, enough to do them justice and they really need justice done to them. They are sneaker casual and I don't often wear sneaker casual outfits. It is better they go to a, go, uh, to a good home that, that will appreciate having them. Overall, in summary, uh, very comfortable. A little snug if you're used to high volume mock toe boots. A amazing value and casually very good looking. So if you're interested, go take a look at my pre-loved boots page on my website, uh, link below. They may be gone by the time you have a look, I don't know. Um, otherwise, don't forget to click on like and subscribe and take care while you're out there. See you again soon.